Well, I was born with a, with a rare visual condition called achromatopsia, which is total color blindness. So I've never seen color, and I don't know what color looks like, because I come from a grayscale world. To, to me, the, the sky is always gray, flowers are always gray, and television is still in black and white. But since the age of 21, instead of seeing color, I can hear color. Uh, in 2003, I started a project with computer scientist Adam Montandon, and the result, with further collaborations with Peter Keshe from Slovenia and Matthias Lisana from Barcelona, is this uh, electronic eye. It's a color sensor that detects the color frequency in front of me and sends this frequency to a chip installed at the back of my head, and I hear the color in front of me through the bone, through bone conduction. So, for example, if I have, if I have like... This is the sound of purple. For example, this is the sound of grass. This is red, like dead. This is the sound of a dirty sock, like, which is like yellow, this one. So I've been hearing color all the time for eight years, since 2004, so I find it completely normal now to hear color all the time. Um, at the start, though, I had to memorize the, the names you give for each color, so I had to memorize the notes, but after some time, all this information became a perception. I didn't have to think about the notes. And after some time, this perception became a feeling. I started to have favorite colors, and I started to dream in color. So uh, when I started to dream in color is when I felt that the software and my brain had united. Because in my dreams, it was my brain creating electronic sounds. It wasn't the software. So that's when I started to feel like a cyborg. It's when I started to feel that the cybernetic device was no longer a device. It, w it had become a part of my body, an extension of my senses. And after some time, it even became a part of my official image. Um, this is my passport from 2004. You're not allowed to appear on UK passports with electronic equipment, but I insisted to the passport office that what they were seeing was actually a new part of my body, an extension of my brain, and they finally accepted me to appear with a passport for them. So life has changed dramatically since I hear color, because color is almost everywhere. So biggest changes, for example, is uh, going to an art gallery. Uh, I can listen to a Picasso, for example. So it's like a, going to a concert hall, because I can listen to the paintings. And supermarkets, I find this is very shocking, very, very attractive to walk along a supermarket. It's like going to a nightclub. It's full of different <laughs> melodies. Yeah. Especially the aisle with cleaning products. It's just fabulous. <laughs> also, the way I dress has changed. Before, I used to dress in a way that it looked good. Now, I dress in a way that it sounds good. <laughs> so. So today I'm dressed in C major, so it's quite a happy chord. If I had to go to a funeral, though, I would dress in B minor, which would be uh, turquoise, purple, and orange. Um, also, food. The way I, I look at food has changed, because now I can display the food on a plate so I can eat my favorite song. So depending on how I display it, I can hear and I can compose music with food. So imagine a restaurant where we can have like Lady Gaga salads as starters. I mean, <laughs> this would get teenagers to eat their vegetables probably. And also some Rachmaninoff piano concertos as main dishes and some Bjork or Madonna desserts. That would be a very exciting uh, restaurant where you can actually eat songs. Also, the way I perceive beauty has changed, because um, when I look at someone, I hear their face. So someone might look very beautiful, but sound terrible. And <laughs> it might happen the opposite, the other way around. So I really enjoy creating like, sound portraits of people. Instead of drawing someone's uh, face, like drawing the shape, I point at them with the eye, and I write down the different notes I hear. And then I create sound portraits. Here's some faces.
Yeah, Nicole Kidman sounds good. <laughs> some people, I would never relate, but they sound similar. Prince Charles has some similarities with Nicole Kidman. They have similar sound of eyes. So you relate people that you wouldn't relate. And uh, you can actually also create sound, uh, uh, concerts uh, by looking at the audience faces. So I connect the eye and then I, I play the audience's faces. The good thing about this is if the concert doesn't sound good, it's their fault. It's not my fault. <laughs> and so another um, uh, thing that happens is that I started having this uh, secondary effect that normal sounds started to become color. I, I heard the telephone tone and it, it felt green because it sounded just like the color green. The BBC beeps, uh, they sound turquoise and listening to Mozart became a yellow experience. So I started to um, paint music and paint people's voices because people's voices have frequencies that I relate to color. And here's some um, music tr translated into, into color. For example, Mozart, Queen of the Night, looks like this. Very yellow and very colorful because there's many different frequencies. And this is a completely different song. It's Justin Bieber's Baby. So it's very pink and very yellow. So um, also voices, I can transform uh, speeches into, into color. For example, these are two very well-known speeches. One of them is Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream, and the other one is Hitler. And I like to exhibit these paintings in the exhibition halls without labels. And then I ask people, which one do you prefer? And most people change their preference when I tell them that the one on the left is Hitler, and the one on the right is Martin Luther King. So I got to a point when I was able to perceive 360 colors, just like human vision. I was able to differentiate all the degrees of the color wheel. But then I just thought that this human vision was, wasn't good enough. It, there's many, many more colors around us that we cannot perceive, but that electronic eyes can perceive. So I decided to continue extending my color senses, and I added uh, infrared and I added ultraviolet to the color to sound scale. So now I can hear colors that the human eye cannot perceive. For example, uh, perceiving infrared is good because you can actually detect if there's movement detectors in a room. I can hear if someone points at me with a remote control. And uh, the good thing about perceiving ultraviolet is that you can hear if it's a good day or a bad day to sunbathe. Because ultraviolet is a dangerous color, a color that can actually kill us. So I think we should all have this wish to perceive things that we, we cannot perceive. That's why two years ago, I created the Cyborg Foundation, which is a foundation that tries to help people become a cyborg, tries to encourage people to extend their senses by using technology as part of the body. We should all think that knowledge comes from our senses. So if we extend our senses, we will consequently extend our knowledge. I think life will be much more exciting when we stop creating applications for mobile phones and we start creating applications for our own body. I think this will be a, a big, big change that we'll see during this century. So I do encourage you all to think about which senses you'd like to extend. I would encourage you to become a cyborg. You won't be alone. Thank you. <laughs>